So that's a cliff. Roll straight to your death. It's probably the scariest thing I've ever been involved in. Not to see what happens. No, stop, stop, stop. Oh, Holy oh. shit. If you thought our first episode of Tassie was wild, you haven't seen anything yet. Join us as we take on the second part of our wild west coast adventure. And we're going to make it. And tackle two of Tassie's most iconic tracks. Oh, get a load of this. Oh, I'm not moving. And just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder. It's not very good. Yeah, I'll play with you, Sean. you were done. I think I'm going to need a minute. got to be one of my favourite tracks in Tasmania. It really gives meaning to what the locals call the Wild West Coast. It really is that. It's really untouched. It's rugged. It's harsh. And it's just downright beautiful as well. An awesome track. The Climbies track, mate. It's on every four-wheel driver's bucket list. Um, none of you guys have done this one. Are you excited? Yeah, it's definitely on my bucket list. I can't wait, mate. From what you told me, it's going to be unreal. Other than a few love marks and a whole lot of mud, the rigs are patched up and ready to face a huge week of wheeling. We've got a massive journey that lies ahead, with well over 50 kilometres of hardcore low-range wheeling, bog holes, beach runs and slippery rocky climbs. But it's not all in vain because I've got a spot in mind that I want to get to, which is arguably one of the best campsites you'll ever see. Off the back of one of our wildest Tassie episodes yet, Sooty is still running smooth after some pretty major hiccups with the engine. And I think she's going to need all the horsepower she's got for this one. Jesse's still wheeling Graham's D-Max and having the time of his life. Continuing this adventure is our good mate Reuben in the big Y62. Pistol Pete at his three litre weapon. And of course, big tones in one of the neatest 80s I've ever seen. And the big FTE engine to boot. It doesn't take long before we get straight into it. And it's looking very wet. First bog hole, mate. First real bog hole of consequence. The problem is with this one, of course, there's not many trees. As you can see, they're all shrubs. If you do get stuck, winching is limited. Yeah, you're just gonna have to have a go and drive it, I think. I was thinking, look, I was gonna do the same with you, but I might get a heavier vehicle behind me, someone like Pete. He's gonna have his winch in free spool. I'll drive him. If I do get stuck, he'll be able to winch me back out and we can reconsider. I'm thinking this line here though, boys, because this is not even sloppy. Right, Pete, I'll, I'm just gonna crawl down to the start, if you wanna follow me. Yeah, roger that. I was just thinking I seem to spend a lot of time attached to your car. <laughs> Hopefully it's not for long. All right. Ah, oh, well done. Good effort, mate, good effort. That wasn't too bad, that wasn't too bad at all. Thank you for that. So you want to give you confidence when you've got a winch hooked up to the back yeah? Now what I'll do is I'll wait here. If Pete does go down, which I doubt he will, I'll be ready to reverse back and pull him out of strife. I've got to turn my lockers off. <laughs> With a little bit of confidence installed in the boys, bog hole one of, well, many, many more oh, is conquered. No match for the D-Max. But something tells me that there'll be plenty more to come and some might not be so easy. <laughs> the Climbies track sits on the west coast of Tasmania and runs between Granville and Trial Harbour, which are remote fishing villages that spend nine months of the year battered by harsh conditions. The track itself is a modest 17 kilometre run, but the conditions on the west coast are often very treacherous and of course very wet. In recent months, the coastline has been drenched with rain and cold weather, making the track conditions the worst we've ever seen it, and making the 17 kilometres seem so much longer. The track is tricky to navigate, often with multiple lines at each challenge. It's always a gamble which line to take, but sometimes you got to just go with your gut. This looks like a festy bog hole. You never know if you're going to make it or not. Is that a F 
So you hit him on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. <laughs> I've got mud everywhere, but I just made that. All right, Jesse's up next. Something tells me he's going to find the limiter of that D-Max. He's not going to be hanging around. What was that? That was a jump. What was he thinking? As a bloke oh, that prides himself on thinking a good line, I've seen it all. Well, I've seen some things in my time, but that is definitely a first. Jesse, you're a madman. What is going on, mate? <laughs> right, someone grab that, and I'm going to reverse down. <laughs> the canopy was sideways in the water before you landed. I seen him sink there, I was like, I'll try and straddle that side, but that must have been, I was like, how did I get him? I must have jumped in. Far out. I've seen some things, but I don't think I've seen a, a, an airborne D-Max for some time. But you know, he's a young bloke, having a bit of fun. Good to see. With whatever just happened aside, the mud in Tassie is a different breed. And once you go down, well, you're down. So he wastes no time in getting Jesse hooked up to Sooty to pull him free. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. Well, the bloke coming through next hardly needs any encouragement. He's seen Jesse with one or two wheels in the air. I reckon Rube's going to try and beat that. Hey, uh, Rubes, all the boys are saying that so far Jesse's got the wildest drive of the whole trip. Uh, just put it out there, mate, that's all. But you're up next. I might stand here. I don't know where to stand. Oh, probably just in, in here. Like, just in here, yeah. Now Reuben's big YC2 is carrying a lot of weight, and with those ruts Jesse's just dug out, this will be nothing short of spectacular. You're telling me old 1HZ Sooty just outdrove the big girl? Hey Reuben, the boys are saying um, if you want to convert it to a 1HZ, I've got some parts. Hey mate, I'm going to need a winch, please. <laughs> <laughs> What we're going to do here, because Reuben weighs a lot, we're going to use the D-Max as an anchor point, but obviously Sooty as well. Get two vehicles rather than one, because you just pull the D-Max, or me, back. With the big rig safely hooked up and the D-Max anchored to Soot, it's a pretty straightforward winch to get Reuben out. I think in this instant, I don't have the power that Reuben has, so oh, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to flick all my buttons on, Dial up the throttle controller, send a little prayer to the four-wheel driving gods, and hopefully some magic will happen, but I give it a 50-50 chance. Oh, he's done it, he's done it! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> That's the line, mate. Yeah. That's the line, mate. Don't take the Reuben and Jesse line. No. <laughs> no. With Pete sailing through in usual fashion, all that's left is the big GME 80. Come on, Tones. Oh, he's in. Oh, he's in the bushes. Oh. Amazing. Oh. 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 He, he always idled through that. Yeah. I think the revs were just a show off the big FTE <laughs> motor. With the Forbes painted in a nice coat of brown, we're through that bog hole and continue our way along the climbies track. Now, one of the things people often forget is the unsung hero of the show, the camera car. The camera car GU is a workhorse and is often tackling challenges at the front of the convoy to get set up for shots ahead. But sometimes things don't go as well as the boys would have hoped. Well, this Tassie mud can be treacherous. I mean, the camera car usually goes first and tries to pick one of the easier lines so I can get out the front, feel must coming through. Problem is, they've taken the easy line and got stuck, so that means that another vehicle has to come in front, which is me, and I can't take the easy line anymore. I've got a feeling this could be one of those situations where we're gonna have five or six vehicles mm. bogged at the same time. It's, if it's you're sort of, the person that tells them where to go, I think that's gonna happen. Yeah, righto, mate. <laughs> I reckon there's nothing to winch off, we just have to get another vehicle around, so I've gotta make it. There's no two ways about yeah. it. And if I get stuck, you've gotta make it. Yeah. Here we go, to save the day with the camera car, or get real stuck. I meant to take. <laughs> well, the good news is I've made it, but the bad news, well, I may have painted the camera car with a bit of mud. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. It looks like a zebra now. <laughs> window open. That's a rookie mistake. As you can see, the window is open, so the seat, everything has just copped the stack of mud. Sorry, boys. But, you know, you do have good seat covers, so you should be okay. Well, it's a tough lesson to learn, but I think the camera crew will have to do some pretty rigorous cleaning of the GU. But for now, it's out with the rumba to see if we can get this vehicle unstuck. Oh, it's really, really stuck. Yeah, hang on, mate. You're going to pull me in the bog hole. Um, we might need another car through. Well, I think Jesse will do all right, assuming he doesn't get airborne anytime soon. He, if he keeps all the tyres on the ground, he might get a bit of traction. Give it another go, you'll be right. Well, he's kept all of his wheels on the ground, but the rear is just getting hung up. Do it same again, you, you'll have this. A few cracks at this, and he should be through. All right, boys, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Yes. yes. That's it. <laughs> right, what? one more go, you got it. One more. Let's say it, Tassie, one more, no more. <laughs> Got it through. How good is this D Max? Well, big GU was stuck. It was just pulling the 80 backwards, so Jesse's come across the D Max. Very spirited drive. <laughs> We've got two vehicles over here now. Hopefully, that's enough to get the camera vehicle out and the other boys can have a go. Okay, winching it. Stay so moving, man. Yeah, we're going back. Man, that thing is stuck. The leaf springs on the rear of the vehicle just act as an anchor in this type of mud, and it's made for an almighty recovery effort. You're moving, you're moving, you're moving. Yeah, you're moving. <laughs> they're stuck, and then there's Tassie stuck. Camera car's going right down. It's actually pulling the 80 series, it's pulling soot and the D-Max far out. get worse. That's pretty wild. Well, we're lucky we got out of that one. With the camera crew out of the way, the rest of the boys have picked a slightly better line along the right-hand side. And with a bit more gusto, it looks like they're through with no dramas. On you, boys. But we're not out of the woods yet. With the rain just about holding off, we try and make some Ks, but the track is just relentless. And it's not long before I've gotten myself stuck. Shono is going first, and he's just slipped between two ruts, he's trying to straddle it, and um, now he's fully diffed out, and we have to give him a quick little spin back. Oh, that's a nice feeling. Look at that. Not not a great line, in retrospect. Would you look at that mud? It's something else down here in Tassie. Can I have another go? Let's not make that mistake again. That wasn't a great line to take. Oh, whatever! Oh, far out, eh? Very easy. Hey mate, what's going on? It's not my day. It's not my day. I've just covered myself, everything in mud. Get out of here. Hold on to her, mate. Hold on to her. This is not my bog hole, it turns out. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. I've got mud all over. You know what? All right, Paulie. Does not matter. These are pretty tough anyway. Right over, Rubes. When you're ready, mate, I'm going to back off from the mud hole if you don't mind. Well, that's not my finest moment, but with the rest of the crew through, it's onwards and upwards. 
Now, believe it or not, this track doesn't just offer mud, but also a stack of tough rocky climbs and slippery ruts to navigate. And with the amount of rain they've had down here, everything is pretty washed out, making for some pretty solid challenges. Wow. Have a go at the exit out of this creek. It's like vertical ramps. I don't even remember this being here. It's no match for big sort, but I reckon some of the other vehicles will have their work cut out for them. Hmm. Try this line, I don't know how we're gonna go. Oh, well, he's going for a straddle. That's a bold move. It's gonna be a big angle. I thought I had that for a second then. Yeah, so did I. I was like, I can't believe this. <laughs> go go right back because now your rear's over. Radio, right gonna try out the guts. Jesse had a good crack, but the smaller tyres mean that there's just not enough clearance to get the rear over. Ruben's up next and he's also trying the same line to straddle up. Ruben, you mad bugger, those are some pretty wild angles. Same problem as the D-Max, it's not gonna work. Ah, I'm barely now. Ruben's tried the middle line, but the longer wheelbase of the Y62 means that he's getting caught up on the belly before the back has a chance to climb up. So, we're going to pack some rocks to see if we can get the back to climb up before he bellies out. Just creep up, like that. Creep up, creep up, creep up. Keep creeping, keep creeping, keep creeping, keep creeping. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, beautiful, beautiful. Keep coming, keep coming, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. Keep driving. Wow, that's a pretty committing drive, but still no luck. Damn it, a lot of commitment. That was so close. If you want to pack them rocks, I'll just hit her up the gut. All right. Bit of rock packing might be needed to try and get Ruben up. The problem is he's got a real long wheelbase. Big tyres and stuff, which is helpful, but the length of that wheelbase means the sliders are sort of grabbing before the back has had a chance to really grab. Do, eh? All right, Big Pete's up, and if I know Pete, he's gonna nail this one with no fuss. Come on, mate. <laughs> Too easy, mate. All right, Tony, bring up the 80. Keep it, keep it up. That's good, that's good. A little bit more aggressive than I planned. Yeah, a little bit more revolving momentum yeah. and bounce rather than a full launch, but that was, he made it, he made it. Ahead of us still lies caves of treacherous mud, as well as arguably one of the sketchiest challenges in Australia. But with the sun setting, it's probably best we tackle these with a bit more light tomorrow. So for now, it's time to enjoy the sunset. It's just about gotten dark. But have a look, there's a perfect Tasmanian glow on the west coast. It's about as good as it gets. And guys, we've said this before, it's almost a cliche. If you don't have a four wheel drive, do yourself a favor. Hey guys, hope you're loving this adventure. I mean, it's a real tough one as you can't half tell, but I wanted to just interrupt for two seconds because we've got an awesome giveaway. That's right, it is competition time. Now we've got a full Raptor kit to give away. It includes all the goodies you'll need to make your next project Raptor proof. Now, to win, put in the comments below what you're working on in the shed and why you need Raptor. The best comment is gonna win themselves a Raptor kit. Good luck. 
with the new day dawning and the sun out. We've got arguably the sketchiest challenge on this track not far ahead, the infamous waterfall crossing. And with the conditions the way they've been so far, it might be pretty wild this year. But first things first, in true Tassie fashion, there's a few ruts and a fair bit of mud to navigate between us and the waterfall. Time to get stuck in, boys. A little bit that way. Yep. Hey, Jesse, you got a copy? Yeah, mate, I got a copy. How's this weather, mate? It's rain and overcast one moment, it's almost bright and sunny the next. Yeah, the sun looks like it's popping out. I think I can see a bit of blue sky. And it's just in time too, because one of my favourite challenges, not just in Tasmania, but probably in Australia is coming up. And you got to see it to believe it, mate. I'm so stoked that summer's coming out in this one. Yeah, that must be the famous waterfall. You've been telling me about that the whole track. I'm, I'm very keen to have a look at it and have a drive of it. That's for sure. I sound like a broken record, but for good reason. When you see it, you'll get it. All right, mate, let's keep flying along. And um, hopefully, um, it doesn't scare the heck out of anyone too bad because it's a pretty committee little line. The track follows the coastline about a K off the coast inland, but this is the point where you've got to turn in and it takes you on a run right down to the cliff's edge. But before we get there, I've managed to get myself stuck. Again. Well, it's not the first time I've had to do this. Sean's down there stuck and I think he wants my help to get him out. What's to go down there, mate? You need a hand, do ya? Wouldn't believe it, but uh, I didn't actually mean to park here. It's sort of just come to an abrupt stop. It's going down here, but it couldn't be too bad, but Actually, it's just full of black soil. It's really simple. Um, just letting you know, you can't actually park there. Oh, yeah, there's no parking zone, mate. Oh, it's, I'll, just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just move out. Yeah, well, look, Sean's been banging on about this waterfall coming up for a long time. And to be honest, I think he's actually getting a little bit nervous. So he's just trying to stall the convoy and make us get there a bit slower, so he's got more time to hype himself up for it. Right, yeah, mate, take it away. It's not often you get this stuck going downhill, but the boys are soon onto it, and we're just about moving. Yeah, that's pretty stuck. How's that? Did not see that coming. Usually when you're going downhill, you don't get stuck. That's my findings, but does he? Well, <laughs> you never know. With the rest of the convoy clever enough to avoid the line I took, we're through and have made our way down to the crossing. And it looks like there's a fair bit of water flowing through this year. Well, this is my favorite part of the track. It's the waterfall section of climbies. And as you can see, you drive through the waterfall, you've got a big cliff edge on one side and you've got a rock step to sort of navigate. The problem is the vehicle wants to lean towards the cliff edge. I mean, it's not a super hard climb, but it gets your heart racing every single time you come here. Today's no different. The boys are looking at it, they're loving life. I reckon uh, we'll steer you sorty through and see what happens. Oh, I love this track so much. It's, it, you can see why as well. It's absolutely stunning, but it still makes me nervous every time I come here because I'm not a great fan of heights you might have worked out by now. And, oh, just one of those tracks where it's just stunning, but it doesn't feel like being first up. Yeah, look, even though I've driven this a bunch of times, it's still you look at that, you look at that drop off, and it doesn't get any easier, mate. Yeah, I think it's one of those tracks that's the same every time you do it, isn't it? <laughs> yep, exactly right. Right, uh, crossing the waterfall. This climb really does put the wind up, yeah. There's little margin for error and one tyre wrong can really be the difference between a good day and a bad one. And that's to say it lightly. Have a look at that view. Oh, this feels sketchy. The challenge here is navigating these big rock steps while also trying to swing the vehicle to the left on probably one of the scariest off-camber climbs there is. And I've never seen it this challenging before. A bit more to the right. I don't like this at all. Oh, far out! Just give it a little drive and see if it'll creep up. Just. 
Yeah, beautiful, man. That was very committing. Well done. You know, start so you're to your left. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh. That's so fun. Steer, steer to your right a little bit, mate. This... I think it's gotten harder. Or I've gotten softer. I don't know. Hey, even if you can roll back a tiny bit and straighten up, there's just a little step off to get you up before you can turn. Roll back. Yeah, that's good. Then come forward to steering a little bit more right. Yeah, that's good. Come forward to that. A little ramp there for you from me on here. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Yeah, hard left now. Yeah, hard left. Keep driving, keep driving. One motion. One motion. Let's see what happens. Now, stop, stop, stop. What's going on there? I don't like that. Real quiet. Yeah, should we try? Should we get a feel of some of the strap trying to roll him, roll him back again in the hole? Hey boys! What's going on? It's not very good. Wait. No, Put good. some weight on that side of the car. Are you are you happy to roll back a bit if we hold the car, or you want you want to winch? Oh no, I don't like this at all. Yep. If you just creep back. Yep, perfect. That's all you need. Yep. Oh, I don't like that at all. What are you gonna. Yeah, that was. Holy. Oh. What are you gonna have to do here? It's like there's a big rock here, so we're gonna have to shuffle to get your front on that side of the rock. This has never been like this. Yeah, that. Oh, I thought you were going there. <laughs> that was wild. We got a good line. So what you're gonna have to do, there's like a rock and it slipped down. So you basically there's a big rock at your front wheel, and you just have to bring them to keep shimming you to get, get you on that side of it. So you have oh. to go hard, hard right hand down and back. And it, the good thing is when you go back the car will level up more. Oh I don't like this at all, Jesse. No. This is not good. So hard right hand down and back. A couple more centimetres of wheel lift was the difference between Sooty and myself getting out of this one unscathed and I'm counting my blessings, but it's yep. far from over yet. Oh, all right and down if you can. It's gonna, that wheel will drop down this will come up, so it's gonna feel better as you go back. So all the right you got, if you can. Yeah, keep going back. 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 Back, you reckon? Real slow. Now yeah, steer full, full left. I don't want to... Nah, I... I want to call it. That's too sketchy for me. That's... that. Oh, I think so, just to be sure. I don't want to... Yeah, I don't, I, it, it shook me, man. Oh, look. I'm turning her off. I'm getting out and having a walk. Yeah. Oh, it's... Tell me about it. I'm, yeah. And that, that's, that that's shook me, man. I'm I'm gonna get a winch. Yeah. Don't blame you. It's wild. Like slipped towards this rock and then this rock just stopped you and all your talk went to that yeah, side. Yeah, so you should be like over here, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to get you there, like. You yeah, but I think I think you gotta come up up here though, not yeah. not where I went. I think. Yeah. I was like, grab the side of that car, eh? Right? Just hold it down. It needed a bit of weight on that side. 
If I'm to be completely honest with you guys, this is probably the scariest moment I've ever had behind the wheel of a four-wheel drive. While I can usually laugh off most of my stuff ups, this one has definitely shook me. You can see pretty quickly how it can all go pear-shaped. Just one little wrong line and I don't know really what happened. It happened so quick, but we've got sort of on the end of a winch rope now and I can only first breath, first breath of air. I can't even talk. It's, um, that was pretty wild. That's probably the scariest thing I've ever been involved in. I think I'm gonna need a minute. With Soot now safely on the end of a winch rope, it should be right to try and get her out of this. Just gonna go for a winch, Jesse. It's also important to note here, folks, that leaning on the side of the Forby isn't a great idea. We are well aware of the dangers of this, and in the heat of the moment, it seemed like the only option, but we don't recommend you do this. thing I've ever seen full driving. That was that was messed up. There's no doubt about it. That was a pretty serious thing and um, still a little bit shaken to be honest with you. It was the wrong line but at the time it didn't really feel like it. I trusted the spotters um, but again you can't blame anyone on this situation because it's not until you sometimes get a vehicle in that line do you know it's the wrong one but it's too late at that stage. So at least though if there's anything to take out of this um, this is a section of track not to muck around with. This is, there's a bypass around here. You can go around. And um, I suggest if you're not confident to tackle this, there's no harm in just coming here to take a photo and, and cruise it around. But the boys will be right. I'll guide them up a different line. <laughs> We've learned our lesson. We should be okay. Well, there's no doubt about it. That wasn't the right line. And a pretty scary lesson was learned. Now, Jesse's up in the D-Max and with some careful spotting and Jesse's expertise behind the wheel, we should be able to navigate him up safely. This is probably one of the wildest views you'll ever get in a full wheel drive track. You're driving straight to the cliff right near the ocean. Something I've never experienced, that's for sure. Jesse, look. That's not the line I'd take you on. I'd probably have you over a bit with your ass over a bit more. I just don't know if you'll drive up that, that's all. You're confident, but don't do any wild drives. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not, not keen to at all. Just, if you're going to do it, just take it real easy. I can go over if you want. Alright, you, you got this. It's real slow. Just a little bit. This is the part where it starts to feel really sketchy and the vehicle starts to lean to the right, showing you an almighty drop off the cliff's edge. It's going to start to feel a bit uneasy, eh? You've, you've got to go up there. But it, That's a better line. The, the back's got to climb now. So far, Jesse's really light on the throttle and we've spotted him up well. Good. Keep, keep coming. Straighten her up. A little bit more that way. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. For me. Sorry. Keep it coming that way. Keep it coming. Yeah, hard. Yeah, hard, Dan. That's you. 
Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Into the auto and the D Max. That made that so much easier. I would hate to use that manual and try and control the clutch. The clutch foot would be shaking, I reckon. Well, that's definitely the right line. You can't this side. A little bit of trial and error. That's not a real place to do trial and error, but that's uh, that's definitely the one to do. I'm going to uh, try and drive with the patrol. We don't want to push it right to the edge though, because there's no coming back from this spot. I mean, that's one of the most scariest experiences I've had. Sean nearly going over that cliff then. Right in there. Now Ruben has by far the heaviest rig in the convoy and with all that weight the Y62 is going to want to lean hard over that cliff. Just a little bit that way. Just a little bit. Hard left. That's it. No, a little bit less, a little bit less mate. Yep, yep, yep. Slowly. Slowly. So far it's been a pretty good drive, but the rig just wants to keep slipping into the hole on the edge of the track, which, as we saw, is not where you want to end up. Nah, nah it's not. Stop, stop, stop. Just put the winch on. Yeah, you're happy with that? Yeah. It's just, the car wants to do what I did and keep going that way. Yeah. Right, let's get a winch. It's a good call, mate. It's better to be safe than sorry. So we're just putting the winch on because I'm slipping into the same rut that Sean did. And um, over right there, I don't know if you can see, but that's a cliff. Roll straight to your death. Yeah. Just a little bit more tones until you go into that little hole that you get the rear's about to go into. Yeah, that's you, mate. If you just jump on the brakes there for us, we'll winch this. Just, um, Rubes, just so you can see, mate, there's a big rock here, and you want to be on this side of that rock, okay? You just tell me um, where to steer if you can. Yeah, we'll do, mate. On that line is perfect, as you, as you drive and winch, same time. Drive, bit of drive, mate, bit of drive. You gotta drive, you gotta drive. Nah, back off, back off. Yeah, if you just go... Reverse a fraction, mate. We're just gonna put some rocks in there for you. With Ruben's long wheelbase, the 4B is just trying to climb two things at once, and even with the winch on, it's just slipping on the rocks. So we're gonna pack it up the front and rear, and it should give the patrol enough momentum to get up and over that lip. A oh, little bit. Right on that, mate. It's nice and slow, but you gotta drive, I think. Winch, you do. Keep going straight on that. No, don't, don't winch. Don't winch. Keep going on that line. Keep it going. That's it. And just like that, you can see what a bit of rock packing can do, both for the drive and getting the driver a bit of confidence as well. That way, mate. Winch out. It's just, it might talk up as the back comes up this bit. Righto, just drive forward and then you gotta to come towards me. Tell you what, right there. Woo, hustling moment. And just like that, Ruben's up. Great work, mate. That was good. It helps having the winch on to start with. That way it gives you a little bit more confidence when it does start to unload its suspension. You're caught from the wind, so it keeps that side of the vehicle down. In hindsight, I wish I had a winch on from the start. <laughs> Just seen Shauno go up. The boys have gone up under winch cable. This is one of those tracks, very scenic, and it's been on my bucket list as a four wheel driver. But when you get here, the view is surreal but you just can't underestimate this climb and how serious the consequences could be if you don't do it safely. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution. Um, it's not one of those hero drives. Uh, and I've gotta say, I'm pretty nervous. So 
Fingers crossed. Pete's up in the big GU, and if there's a 4 b you want to drive this challenge in, it's probably the one. Oh my God. And Pete really wasn't hanging around for that one. He picked the line and committed, and he's made it look quite easy. Well, I've got to say, <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. I was nervous, and anyway, we got a good line and just walked it up, so I'm relieved. Well, after seeing what just went down, and in a pretty similar setup to Sooty, but a bit taller and a bit heavier, and with a lot less experience, I'm going to take the bypass track. It's a pretty gnarly uh, set of consequences if you, if you get it wrong, so um, I just don't have the confidence to do it, and I'll, uh, I'll take the safe option. I don't blame, don't you, blame you in the slightest, mate. Nothing wrong with that, mate. Nothing wrong with that. We'll, we'll, we'll awesome. scoot around, we'll meet you at the See end the there. Top. And with that, it's another year we can cross off the waterfall crossing, but I've got to say, it's one of the more memorable ones, and not for the right reasons. With the boys pretty worn out from the day's events, we point our noses toward the end of the climbies track. There's a few more tricky sections to navigate through, and those huge rutted sections just show how bad the conditions are this year. The Climbies is usually a medium graded track, with some challenging spots, but this year it's been relentless, with deep mud and washed out rock climbs that require maximum focus to navigate. Hey Jesse, you got a copy mate? Yeah sure, I got a copy mate. Mate, what do you reckon, the Climbies track? Did it tick the boxes for you big fella? Oh definitely mate, it was unreal, that track had a bit of everything, a bit of rocks, a bit of mud. The hill climbs and the views the whole way, mate. That was mind blowing. Yeah, it really is. It's a special track, mate, and I reckon it's um, probably the most challenging I've ever seen it as well. So I reckon it's getting a little bit late in the day. What do you reckon, fellas? We head to a campsite and um, if you're lucky, I might even uh, pull the old cookware out. But, uh, end a great day, Sean. Can I ask what you're cooking us if you decide to cook? Mate, I'm going to think of what I'm cooking first. <laughs> what are you, Tony? You came for a cold beer? Yeah, Sean, sure, that was a cracking day, mate. Uh, and yes, I am definitely keen for a cold beer after a little bit of excitement today, so um, you're yeah, looking forward to it. I like the sound of that, no worries. All right, let's uh, get to camp, boys. I think it's fair to say that a few coldies are needed tonight. So it's high time we found a good spot to pitch our swags for the night. And if you know Tassie, you know there's no shortage of specky spots to do just that. We've found ourselves the perfect little spot just north of Granville Harbour to call home for the night. There's a heap of amazing spots to camp along this area of coast, but always make sure you check with the local council to see if they've opened and you've got the right permits. After the day that's unfolded, the boys aren't slow in getting their camp setups going. Well, first time for me wheeling down in Tassie with the boys, and I've got the keys to Graham's D-Max. Tell you what, it's pretty flash living out of this thing. Got fridge, drop down slide, the full mitt set up in here. It's probably a bit different to the milk crates I've got in the back of my GQ. I'm absolutely frothing the setup in the car. It's actually really surprising me. Some of the places it's going, it's, um, it's unreal. Now, when you're camping in Tassie, you really need to be prepared for all kinds of weather, especially when you're camping right on the coast, as the wind can be something fierce. But lucky for us, the conditions aren't too bad today. Well, it is that time of day. I reckon, enjoy a couple of beers, sit around camp for a little bit and start to think of what I can cook. Cause I've got sort of limited supplies tonight, but that's not gonna hold me back from cooking up something absolutely spectacular. Better start thinking. With the sun setting, it's high time we sit back relax and enjoy a few coldies and look back on the adventure so far but there's still plenty more to come well how good is this i mean 
the West Coast of Tassie never disappoints, but we've been so lucky with the weather. We've had a bit of rain, but the camps have been absolutely phenomenal, and this one almost tastes a cake, if you ask me. Tonight's recipe, I sort of, <laughs> I didn't have much in the in the way of stock in the old sooty at the moment, so I went to Zian. I'd normally say mongrel mix, but this is not. This is gonna be like a, a bit of a chicken stew. I don't have a name for it yet. First things first, we're gonna get the old uh, Genesis going. Yeah, it must have come on an off day, because there wasn't, there wasn't a stack of options. And I need to use this chicken quickly split because use by a date, I won't tell the rest of the boys this, but it's best before tomorrow. So you got a bit of, a little bit of leeway here. Okay, first things, get a bit of pepper. You notice I'm not even taking them out of the packet. I'm trying to make less mess. That's my new rule as a chef. Get a little bit of salt. It's coming out in big chunks. So I think I've got a bit of water in the drawers at some stage today. Yeah, the whole plan is we're not cooking the chicken all the way through. I always like to serve it medium rare. No, I'm just joking. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna brown it off. Chuck, chuck those straight in. Don't even muck around. That's starting to look pretty good. Can you smell that, mate? That smells pretty good, but you haven't got much going on over here. What's the go? I'm just gonna start chopping some other bits and pieces. What's the secret here so you don't cry, mate? Uh, just breathe, breathe tough. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your mouth? Yeah. Okay. It also helps have a sharp knife and, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's going so good too. There you go, that, that's, that's what we're after. A bit of garlic chopped up, that's starting to smell real good. I'm just going to quickly dice some celery, some carrots. A little bit of prep work, but while they're cooking, you got a bit of time, you know what I mean? You get some of that chicken in, put it in this little pan in this here. Pan, yeah, yeah, got, yeah. The, got the heat turned down on this one. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're nice and brown as well. That's the ticket. That's, look at that one, nice that and brown. One's beautiful. There you go, you know what you're doing. Oh, you know what you're doing. It's, it's like, like my first time slapping it's a chicken, like rock mate. It's like rock packing. Oh, <laughs> what happened there? In the eye. Oh, do you, Jesse? Just <laughs> slow down, mate. There's young bucks, I tell you what. <laughs> Got a bit of gold out of it. Too soon, you reckon? <laughs> oh, tell you what. Might need a bit of oil in there. Got a bit of pink eye going on. It's not the first time in Tasmania, mind you. Onions are going straight in. You got to stir those little buggers around. Celery's gonna go in. Just you know what? Are I you just, all that in? I should just pick up pick up the old chopping board. Yeah, that, that's what the hole is for in the chopping board, believe it or is not. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't know you that. Push it in there. That's all what it's for. All these years of yep. being a chef, I never yeah. knew that was the go. Yeah, mate. That's what it's for. I don't know if it is, Jesse. It is, it is. <laughs> I saw it on TV once. Well, you keep staring at that. You mate. believe everything you see on TV. <laughs> is this the uh, zinger herbs and spices? This really is. This is a bit of thyme. Not to be confused with thyme. Maybe a quarter of a handful. Half that didn't make the oh, no, pan, you no, might need to go again. Go another sort of third of a handful. I'm gonna put a little bit of the chicken. Oh, I don't wanna go too much though, <laughs> that's the key. Don't go too much. Not too much on that bit of chicken, but heaps on that bit, eh? Yeah, well that's the key. Put a little bit of Tabasco habanero that's going in. This is actually really spicy, this one. Do you like spicy food? I should Not really, no. Nah. Do we have enough cooking. toilet paper for everyone? If we're gonna no, honestly, do you, like, it? you tell me when to stop. Oh yeah, like I love hot <laughs> food, eh? Yeah, like. Well, okay, go on yeah. then if you like. Just empty the bottle, eh? Like, right. Well, there you no go. No worries. I think, oh, you can smell that. One key ingredient now, Jesse. Ah, oh, I remember when you got that the other day. A little bit of red wine now. This is a Zian special. Tazzy local drop, but isn't so it? I'm probably gonna put about half a glass. And the rule really is, whatever you put in the pot, you should double it for yourself. <laughs> what we're going to do there is just basically cook the alcohol off, and um, while you're cooking the alcohol off that one, <laughs> you I'll, drink um... the alcohol out of that one. <laughs> you don't have to mash it all together, mate. You can just give it a odd stir every now and again if you like. No, I like I like <laughs> when you stir it. See, you get a bit of hot here, and you mash it down. No, don't mash it. There's no, no mashing. No, no, you're going to ruin it. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a bit of chicken stock in. All of that. Fair bit of it. You know what I mean? Give that a little bit of a stir. Actually, you know what? You're right, Jesse. I'm gonna go all of it, and I'll tell you why. I might even put a bit more in later, because I'm gonna cook the pasta in the same in, pot. Oh, so a little bit more liquid wouldn't go astray. You're just gonna basically straight in. shovel those straight. You're gonna help me if you like. I thought you were gonna splash it straight on me. No, put, all, out of there. put all those straight in. You could turn the heat down. We've got to dial that down a little bit. I'll put the lid on that. We're gonna let that simmer for probably about 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, have a couple of glasses of red, I reckon. Yep. Maybe a couple of beers, who knows? Sounds good to me. All right, mate. How's that? Look at the smell. Smells good. Smells Look at good. the smell. I always say that. I don't mean to say that, but that that is actually looking really good. Mm. That chicken is going to be so tasty. Nice. The smell coming out is fantastic. What I'm going to do now? Chuck a bit of pasta in. Exactly right, mate. So I put extra stock in there. It's got a bit of moisture. Get the this pasta. This will absorb a bit of the liquid in there. A hell of a lot of it, I reckon. Give it a mix around, and what we'll do once that 
all goes in there. You don't want the pasta on the surface, you want that under <laughs> the water. No, you gotta pat it down, mate, that's the <laughs> key. And we've gotta give it another sort of 15 minutes at least, and that'll soak all that juice up. Open her up, mate, open her up. There we go. Look at that. Get it all in because that is looking absolutely red hot. Boys, it smells unreal. Gather around and get your fighting gear. Bit of chicken in there. Jesse, bit of chicken, mate. A couple chicken. of bits chicken there. It's got a bit of spice, mate. I won't lie to you. <laughs> you have a little bit more. You can have a oh, bit more. That's oh, got some got... rally about it. Exactly right. You hear in Tasmania, you're not just driving hard tracks, you're eating hard meals too. That's <laughs> oh. what it's all about, fellas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Bit of go about it. Yeah. There's like the big three liter oh on the limit. Oh my god. Mm. Oh. Lovely, isn't it? Why are you crying, Pete? Why are you crying? <laughs> you know, and the, and, and, the, and the key is, when you've got a cold night, sometimes it's nice and warm from the inside out, in my opinion. Oh. Fellas, oh. I reckon we uh, sit around the fire, get warm from the outside mm. and the inside. What do you reckon, Jesse? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad, actually. It's really nice. Now, a lot of you guys would know that DMW have the biggest competition I think I've ever seen in the four-wheel drive industry that could literally change your life. Now, it's your last chance to enter. Ruben, what is the prize, mate? So you can choose our Silver 79, I call it Moto Moto, or you can choose our big green 200 dual cab, which I call Gloria, or you can take 150 grand cash. All you've got to do is go to our website and get yourself a gift voucher. It is that simple and you are in the draw. It really is a small price to pay for an amazing opportunity at one of the best prizes you can literally walk away with. Guys, this is your last chance, so make sure you jump onto this one quick smart so you don't miss out. And best of luck. Cheers, guys. As the morning breaks, it seems that conditions are holding out for us, but there's some dark clouds looming in the distance. The west coast is known for its harsh conditions and is quite often wet and barraged with wind. If these conditions pick up, it might make for an interesting day. As usual, Ruben's got his chef hat on with an almighty feed going on in the DMW kitchen. And I reckon we're going to need it because today's track is going to be a tough one. The Forbies are looking a little bit worse for wear after a few weeks in Tassie, so it always pays to give them a check over in the morning before tackling the tracks. Well, when the car's getting worked as hard as they are down here in Tasmania, a little bit of preventative maintenance goes a long way. Each morning, I just like to sort of get a few tools out and I walk around. And I know in my car, I normally do it, so I'm just doing it the same on the D-Max. Check your main suspension bolts, wheel nuts, and obviously under bonnet check, you know, all your fluids check there, all good for the day. And um, that'll save you a lot of time on the side of the tracks. How's that? Still three quarters full after a big night of using all my camp lights, fridges, things like that. I haven't had much to do with the go block, to be honest, but after using it for the last couple of weeks in Tassie, it's really grown on me just because how simple it is, it just gets the job done. It's super simple, I just sit it in there, forget, and when I drive the vehicle, well, it begins to charge. And speaking of driving, we've got some epic stuff on the cars today, a really cool beach run that'll take us right down to the Arthur River. Boys have never been here, pretty excited to show them around. The track we're tackling today is known as the Arthur Pyman Track and runs north from Granville Harbour, roughly 25 kilometres to the Arthur Pyman River. Oh, get a load of this. We're in the mud one minute and down on the beach the next. Now this is the Arthur Pyman region, been here a few times and it's absolutely stunning. We picked a perfect day too, we've got calm seas which is a rarity around here. It's actually a nice-ish day, it's just awesome to get a bit of sand under those tyres. Now, it's a pretty treacherous little beach. You've got to watch out for a few different challenges. Obviously, tides play a huge part around here, but also quicksand. That's a thing that you get in Tassie a fair bit. You get that wrong, um, you will sink your vehicle. No two ways about it. Have a go with this, eh? Hey, Jesse, copy, mate? Yeah, mate, I got a copy. That's the go. Look. It's a beautiful beach, this one, and um, very soon we're going to get into a stack of mud. So enjoy this while it lasts, but I do want to put a little carrot at the end, mate, because what I have planned tonight, if we make it, is, I'm going to say it, the best campsite I've ever been to. Well, that's a bloody big call for you. I reckon you've been to a lot of camps, but um, if it's going to be the best, I'm super keen to get there and have a look. In true Tassie form, it doesn't take long before the poor weather sets in. 
and as we leave the beach, it's not long before we hit the first bog hole of many. This one, oh, this is actually a bit deep. Oh, it just made it through. With the rain continuing to fall, it's not going to make these bog holes any easier. Well, we thought we'd got through most of the deep and hard ones, but this one here, it's a bit mysterious. I've had a bit of a check. It does feel a little bit soft, but there could be hardness under that. Sean's up first, so let's see how he goes. Well, he just made that. I thought he was stuck for a second there, worked the wheel and he got out. What a drive. Well, Jesse's up next. So I've actually left Sooty near the bog hole just in case he gets stuck, which I think he might. I can be quite quick to get the vehicle back and I've got the recovery gear in here as well. So fingers crossed I don't have to get my feet wet. That's all I'm hoping. Rightio. Right. This one's deep, soft. Well, Jesse, I think you might have just missed your line there. Nearly. What line was that? <laughs> nearly, nearly made it. What a drive. I've just learned something new about Jesse. One of the, he's a, he's a fellow who can steer a vehicle up nearly any line in Australia. When it comes to mud, he's out of his depth. <laughs> he's sideways on the run. I'll hand it to him. He's definitely not given up. Oh. Run out of <laughs> just like, just pick usually one rut and go with it. Like. Oh, it was so close! So close! I'm going totally the wrong way. But we are very, very close. As they say in Tassie, one more, no more. Cool. He used all three ruts, but I got out. <laughs> That's, you know, that counts as driving it twice. Yeah. The D-Max that good. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that last time I backed in, I thought I might have overdone it. Oh, no, yeah, for a second, I'll be getting the winch out. That was really good. That was third low and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, hats off. What a drive. Tell you what, this D-Max is a ton of fun. Doesn't matter what four you got, get out there and have a go. Okay, Ruben's up next. You can hear him, mate. Mm. Uh, something tells me. I don't even know. But There's a insane. chance of a Ruben Rev, I reckon. <laughs> There's a high chance. Yeah. I'm out of the way. No! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Don't go in your sock. He's in, he's in. Oh. Easy. Pistol Pete always just makes everything look easy. This is no uh, excuses for me now, right? Yep. You put me aside. Yeah, I see. Going for it. <laughs> Birthday or not, mate? You know the real character of me now because when the, when the going gets tough, I ran past. <laughs> like, Every man for himself. Yeah. We're getting closer and closer to one of the speckiest campsites you'll ever see. But between us and the campsite lies some of the thickest mud the Arthur Pyman region has an offer. From memory, I have flooded my car in one of these. I can't remember which one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go this one. Go that one, yeah. I think, and I'm going to send it through. We'll see what happens. There's what multiple happens. lines you could do. This one's got grass growing in it. I'm not <laughs> sure about it. It's that, every man for himself. That looks deep, but I'm, I can't really test it. But <laughs> so it's going to come to the rescue. Let's go. Let's get this campsite, eh? Let's do it. I spot a line over the left. I'm hoping the ruts aren't as big, but we'll see how we go, eh? Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. That's great. Up yeah. the D-Max. We should make a rule. Everyone's going to pick a different line through the bog hole. I oh, thought that's what it was. Yeah, so you Every take minute. that one, yep. so those two are out. They're gone. They're okay. taken. They're okay. not there anymore. <laughs> hey, Ruben, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but this set of mud holes is a game. As someone drives a line, 
the line is gone. You can't drive that line anymore. So that line's gone and that line's gone now. You have to pick another one. Yeah. <laughs> Where's he going? Where's he going? What are you doing? That's your line. Do we make him reverse back? That was your line. Yeah, that was not. That's that's actually technically. Oh, I, I think that's cheating. We're, I'd like to see the replay of that. So I'm going to make a really stupid decision here, and I'm going to take the what looks to be the wettest line and possibly the hardest line. So good on me. So, I reckon what I'm going to do is sharpen my throttle. I'm going straight to U9. I've got all my lockers on. I'm on research, so hopefully all things go well. And if worse comes to worst, I've got some bilge pumps ready to go. So flick of the switch and we'll be on. Oh, oh, go, he's go. stuck, he's stuck, he's stuck. Straight to action, boys. Oh, 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 go oh. In, don't go in, don't go in. Oh, boots it's all going on. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Bag on, bag on. Oh, boys. Clear winching. Once again, the winch truck boys are straight into it and have got Pete on his way out of the mud. But not everything is going to plan. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. She snapped. Oh, no. How's that? That's heartbreaking. Just snapped. So, yeah, Reuben bought a spare rope and he said, oh, you should get one. I go, nah. Never need it. Wow, that's pretty wild. Well, this is one of the only times in bog holes where going last doesn't go to your advantage. Mm. Tony's last, we've <laughs> taken all the good lines, I reckon. He's got this middle one here, that's the only one really left. So, what do you Good reckon? luck to him, I reckon. That's all we can say at this <laughs> point of the day. Tony, good luck, mate. Oh, beauty. <laughs> he probably drove that the easiest yet. It's, it's yeah. bog hole roulette, folks. Play with your mates. Good game. <laughs> Good fun. It's always important to have a bit of fun when you're out in the tracks, even when it's just mud for miles. I think we got about, what, five, ten metres? Yeah, a couple of car lengths. And there's another bog hole. This one's pretty treacherous. Now, unfortunately, we had to go to the rule book and there was a bit of a DNF. Yeah, Ruben got disqualified on the last hole because he used the line that was already used. So that means he's up first for this one. And we've managed to pick the worst looking bog <laughs> hole. And he's up first. So that's what you get. That's what, that's what happens. Unfortunately, we don't make the rules. We're just here to play. We're just enforcing them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how deep that is, and that looks very treacherous, and yeah. it doesn't look like anyone's driven that in a very long time. I, I can I can confirm the first two feet are hard bottom. Yeah. That's what I can confirm. The rest, well, yeah. we'll find out soon. And uh, All right. good luck. Good luck, give it, mate. Give it a rev, <laughs> Well, he gave it a good crack in the big 62, but it's gone straight down. Come right back, rooms, and have another go. Right hand down and back. But reversing has got him even more stuck, and there's just no traction in that mud. Now the well, hard we'll bit. We'll see you at camp, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Now the difficult bit is he's stuck, and we've got no car in front of him. Is there? There's, there's only shrubs around here. There's another winch off. I'll have to find another line of sooty. I didn't plan for this. <laughs> Oh, we made How it. Good that? That's good news. Soot's through with no dramas. Now to hook up Reuben and see if we can't get him out. Slowly but surely, the Y62 is coming free and eventually Reuben is out of trouble. And I think we know that that line is now off limits. Pete and Tony are through with no dramas, and all that's left is Jesse and the D-Max. Let's see what this D-Max has got, eh? Let's get into it. This one's going to be deep. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Too easy. Don't even think I spun the wheels. <laughs> Unbelievable. And with that, there's one final slippery climb before we reach the coast again. And the camp for the night is within sight. 
Now, look at this. There's a big hill. Oh, it's steep. Need a bit of rolling momentum for this hill, I think. Ha ha ha! What a drive and what a view. Have a look at that. I'm winding the window for you. This view is unreal. Coastline, jagged rocks, nice beach. <laughs> well boys, what can I say, it's been a bloody epic trip in one of the most remote parts of not just Tasmania but Australia and one of the most scenics to boot. Jesse, what do you think mate, your first time down on the west coast of Tassie, lay it out mate. My first time down here, I didn't know what to expect but I'll tell you what, I've had a ball, it's, we've done a bit of everything and yeah, I'm frothing. Mate, I don't blame you for frothing. It's a, it's a place to froth over, that's for sure. Rooms in the big Y62, mate, that thing, um, holy heck. It's uh, made some noises. Yeah, no, she gets on the bark pretty good, but I tell you, mate, I love Tasmania. What an amazing place. It has got everything. You know, like, it's a place I reckon I could live. It's just so amazing. Pete, what do you reckon, mate? I've had a ball. I, I reckon this place should be on every four-wheel drive's bucket list. It certainly was mine and it hasn't disappointed, mate. It's been an absolute hoot to uh, travel with you guys over this beautiful state. What about you, Tony? First time on the West Coast as well, mate, and um, you've wheeled that 80 series like a boss. Yeah, mate, first time wheeling anywhere in Tassie for me, and it's been a really good experience, and at a personal level, I just want to thank all of you guys for all your help and guidance. There's, um, there's been some pretty tough tracks that I'm not really used to driving, and it's been uh, a good education for me. Yeah, you can get a pretty big crash course in um, in hard wheeling when you're in Tassie. It's like nothing else really. you got some, some of the craziest mud, rock steps, all sorts of stuff and these are just the local tracks down here. It's pretty crazy stuff. Alright boys, well follow me. We've got one last little treat and uh, I hope you got some cold beers in those bridges of yours. Him, would you look at that. Mud one minute to paradise the next. What do you reckon mate? Mate, this is bloody unreal. Like 10 minutes ago, we were stuck in a bog hole. I was not expecting this campsite. Yeah, every now and again, mate, I got to trump up my sleeve. I've always wanted to camp here and tonight is the night. And a little behind the scenes as well, it's Pete's birthday tonight. So we've, we've come up with something absolutely special. I mean, get a load of it. This is one of the most scenic places you'll ever get to roll a bit of canvas out. The West Coast of Tasmania, folks, if you haven't put it in your diaries, do it right now. When are you coming down? Because this place is off tap. It's a four-wheel drive paradise. The camping options are absolutely unlimited. The tracks, mate. The tracks are unreal. The climbing like, track. You, you, bit of everything down here. There's nothing like it in no. probably the world. So get, get down to Tasmania and really, really embrace it because this place is off tap, mate. It I is, reckon it is. a couple of cold beers, round yep. a fire. And if it's okay with you, mate, we might have a bit of a late start tomorrow and uh, just go exploring around here. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Folks, just... One last thing, in the comments, please let us know if you've ever seen a more picturesque camp than this one, because I doubt there'll be many comments about that. No mate. one's going to comment, mate. I don't reckon <laughs> there'll so. There'll be none. Cheers, folks. Well, a little bit gutted, to be honest, this morning, because I had a sleep over it, and... Um, had a sleep over it? Or on it. <laughs> sleep over we, it. we slept on it. Had a sleep over and room the tent? We, we slept together and <laughs> I, I'm gutted, Jesse. I, I thought you'd be better than that. Yeah, g'day guys, it's Graham Cahill here. This is the reason we own a four wheel drive. <laughs> Don't look up. Oh, where's this? Where's this? I call this a full moon track. Mm. I'm cold and we're not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the traction's starting to go after a couple of vehicles and Right, more, uh, yeah. What's wrong with me, Dos? I'm not okay. <laughs> you supposed to have mates on these trips and they just, <laughs> they just go right behind my back. I did not say the three litre should only come in milk cartons. I did not. I should have said that would be funny. If you say just then. Yeah, I know. I just thought of it now. It wasn't what? quite as stiff. Oh, 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 I knew it. I knew you picked it. <laughs> What's the big plan, big fella? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. Whatever you're doing, I cannot I'm hear just, you. I'm just going to custard, mate. Sorry. Your brain's not working. Hello. My name is Mustachio. I was trying to get my mirror sorted. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's just a camera in my face. I don't know what to say every time. What am I going to do? Just make something up? 
it's really been used on a few cook-ups. You can tell you just, probably just, just smelling the right way. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you had a stroke. So, Sean, if you want to bring your vehicle down, turn it around, and uh, we'll start with you. It's sort of... Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, that's, that's two from two. <laughs> <laughs> Right about now, the boys realised they weren't getting a pub feed. Yeah. Ah! Something like that. A little I bit more. No, no, we're on. <laughs> you, you, you just pulled that too early. Never do that. <laughs> there you go.